Living with bipolar looks and feels like um, something that is hard to explain. It deals with the highs and lows of your mental illness. Living with severe depression and bipolar 2, I felt lost, hopeless. The definition of a disorder is something that can't, like I can't overcome it and it affects my ability to thrive in a social economic system. When I'm in the heights of my mania, uh, I've been known to do um, this one thing, is that I just don't go to sleep at night. I stay up because I don't want to miss anything. I felt stuck in a room where you can't get out. You're in a dark place and you just don't know what to do with yourself or you don't care to know about anybody or anything. When we talk about mental illness, we usually talk about things like symptoms and impairment and, and challenges. Then we think about therapy and psychiatry and all these different ways to intervene with trying to minimize the symptoms of mental illness. But I think that the most important and most challenging aspect of mental health challenges is actually about the social communication. Pain and Brain is a platform on which people with mental health challenges can really sort of show themselves off to the world and demonstrate that they're worth hearing and worth listening to. We became a nonprofit just two years ago in 2017, but what we've always operated on is this idea that if you can get a group of people together around an art project, they will naturally form connections and social bonds with each other. And so our main service that we provide to Los Angeles is by offering art groups as a service. We've also diversified into tech and media. Graphic design, web development, coding, front-end development, app development, search engine optimization, social media marketing, and photojournalism. Well, we're very excited to be offering our tech training program. People that have homelessness, mental health issues, they sign in for a program and they basically learn how to code and we do what we can to get them job ready. For many people that have lived experiences with mental health, those things could be a huge barrier for anyone trying to get back into getting a job. We're actually producing our own model of workforce development where we can actually say, having a mental illness is not a verdict on life. We also offer a lot of other services. We have an occupational therapy wing where we do occupational therapy group activities and individual work. We're offering clinical services, case management services, and a chance for people to recover and move on with their lives. So we run about 35 groups a week at all these different agencies, drop-in centers for youth that are living on the streets, people that are living in group homes with mental illness, people that are in psychiatric hospitals. All of those get activities from us. And what that does is create a pocket of community and interaction at that space, and also hopefully creates an interactional opportunity for people to get involved with our community center and our bigger community. One of the things about social media that makes it unique, it's a great way to seek support, and it's also a great way to build community. We have about combined almost 80,000 followers on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Painted Brain, the way we see it is like this. For a mental health movement, to build communities, to ignite movements around the world for actual positive change. Painted Brain has impacted and changed my life through art and poetry in an awesome, incredible way. For me, it's really good therapy. It helps me get centered and grounded and uh, passionate about my art. One of the art pieces that I hold dear to me is this one. They stay close to me because even though I was in my dark state, I still produced art. The Pain to Brain has helped with my daily struggles of being me. I never left the house, ever. Doing the weekly art groups in Hollywood really got me to leave the house. It might like, take a really long time, but I get there. We have a community here at the Painted Brain and people really support each other. 
in their expression of their art and who they are and whether they're having some struggles, you know. It's like, a, like a, kind of like a family, you know. I found myself becoming more and more a part of that community. It wasn't something I was doing for people, it was something I was doing with people. I'm one of a lot of people living with mental illness, loud and proud and not ashamed, and, and I've really become sort of a part of the community that I hopefully started. The way I feel now, I have a home, I have a family. It looks peaceful and bright, welcoming, no matter what, what time I come, or even when I don't come, because every time I come back, it's just like love. The feeling of knowing that you could come to a place and feel welcome and do what you'd like to do and make you feel better. It's just a freedom and support where you know you could get what you need done and get help for whatever you're feeling or having to deal with at the moment. It's hope, it's freedom, it's life, it's love. Painted Brain is more than a nonprofit organization. It is a movement that transforms the way society views and talks about mental illness.